there, humans, hippies, earthlings, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too, welcome back to the channel on Bushka. Uh, you probably knew that. Anyway, but today we're going to be having a look at two German tanks. Two tanks of German origin. Uh, this is the Jaegeru, obviously. Uh, it's a big bopper. And then we're going to have a look at a Leopard 1 game. Now, these are two very, very different games. And I found it, uh, just as a, a purely intellectual exercise, interesting to see they're both massive damage games uh no denying that but the difference in both the play styles of the tanks now i'd like to point out that both these tanks are being played pretty much in accordance with the way the map dictates and the way the team setup is dictated you could possibly push with the jaeger rupert there's so many heavies and such in front of this guy uh foxtrot that he's actually in a really good spot uh and Wow, he red racks, immediately red racks an object 140, which is <laughs> pretty nuts that they both go GG. Uh, there's not much you can do about that. And this is not a bad way of playing the tank. This is, in fact, almost perfectly set up and situated for the map. And it's a great way of using the jaeger When you don't need to be pushy and aggressive and you don't know where everyone is, this is actually quite fine. Five minutes in and he's red racked a tank and is looking for more work. In fact, he's up to, you know, two minutes in rather. And, uh, and he's pumped out his, what, three and a half K? And it's just growing up. It's just getting bigger and bigger as that fire works some magic. Now, the Jaegeru was a tank that got buffed, and that was inexplicable to me because I have done quite a bit of work on the Jaegeru before. I did a, uh, a masterclass on the Jaegeru with Dark Magician Girl, one of the more noted and skilled users of the big JG, and I've done a lot of videos where I play it. And in fact, if you've watched any of the streams, one of the things that I find fantastic about the Jaegeru is that it works really, really well at high ping and it doesn't seem to care too much as long as you play it and know how to angle it. The gun just pens. Like, it's got so much penetration on this gun. In fact, one of the funniest things I've found lately was just how broken the badger is because when i'm looking at it with the jaegeru the frontal armor is all kinds of red and i'm like man really it's it's like this is this is one of the best pen guns in the game and it's still struggling to pen the front of the badger unless you hit it on the boobies uh for those of you who don't know what i'm talking about you'll just need to look at the badger and you'll you'll find out and if you get hit at angles with this tank it's incredibly tough to pen like it's and it's just broken alpha wise i i think this is one of the best tds at tier 10 for certain situations and i i really enjoy playing it and foxtrot is playing this exactly as the game dictates uh he has had so many open shots and he's been able to put out so much damage on the enemy that he's not been forced to move off his perch and you can see how he's angling and jingling and jangling and doing all those kind of things and he finally gets down off the mountain because this chieftain mark six is, has rolled forward and spotted him the problem with that for the chieftain is that he's had to roll forward to do it which is kind of nuts because over the hill comes the Jaegeru, and that is an awful lot of damage for that chieftain just basically signed his death warrant by pushing forward in the open there and the chieftain did it because he was desperate to get that tank spotted uh there's a lot of people who run tanks like the chieftain etc that are hull down tanks uh and run them in the open like open field heavies like an e75 is or a mouse or an e100 where they can really angle up hard and be very hard to hit with tiny bits of cover in front of them and that's just not the case and this is a prime example of a game that has really just exploited a team layout that's actually been really effective and really good. His team absolutely moved on. Oh, there's a 1,000 damage AP round. I mean, that's just ugly. That is so nasty. And there's a there's a waffle tractor left. Like, there's plenty of chicken left on this bone. Let's see how we go. Oh, oh, oh wow. Just whoa slow down your horses there pilgrim these are massive numbers but it's rare in blitz that you're going to get a team that works in such a concerted and intelligent manner where they really do push around the map 
uh, and spot and withdraw and don't YOLO. This is actually the whole of the green team played this really, really well. They absolutely um, held two fronts but didn't bleed, which is massive and important. And the red team rolled in and you know, it was close. The red team actually put up a really good fight. But at the end of the day, if you've got a Jaeger at the back that's getting uninterrupted shots on multiple targets, that will just wear you down to the point where, yeah, you come second. Um, and so that's in excess of 8K for our amigo here, Foxtrot. And I'll show you the final scores. And then we're going to show you a game in the Leo one, which is really... The main motivator for me here, I really wanted to highlight this game because I think it is absolutely one of the best Leo 1 games I've seen for quite some time. Uh, 8,243 damage, obviously a mastery batch. Like if that wasn't a mastery, you would be in all kinds of trouble. And here we have a look at uh, just a, a really hard drive in a Leopard 1. I say hard drive because this, this although it is a map that is quite friendly to a fast mobile tank. And why do I say that? Because it's got split levels. So you have multiple areas where you can conceal your tank and move. Like if someone's in the middle, you can go high and get away. If someone's on either of these areas here, you can go high or low and get away. And I love the fact that the Leo has absolutely been aggressive here. He has really taken a big chance in pushing forward because he's correctly assumed that the bad guys are going towards the heavy side of town. And he's got plenty of cover with him. But if you've got a Jaegeru and a 263 going through there, you'd have to think that everyone else has already left because the Jaegeru is obviously the slowest tank on the map right now. And that was a smart move by him. And he's continuing to play smart football here as he basically uses hard cover, soft cover, range, spotting, all those kind of things to get free shots in and bleed the Reds one step at a time. Look at this. Just knows he can't get that shot off, lets it go. That's clever, okay? That's not just taking a risk. This is taking what's on offer. Now, side shots in on I-7 and then moves down behind the hard cover. Not spot cool so he's now going to relocate to a better position where he can go backwards and forwards here hull up hull down looking for spots and this is just all round a very very intelligent drive thus far we're only what two minutes in we've got 2,000 damage done uh, no damage taken and he's supporting his heavies all over the place another example there of not taking a bad shot knows the Jaegeru doesn't have a lot goes for a heat round doesn't get it, but he was about to die, so he's just going to try and clear that target regardless uh, and still looking for work. That waffle tractor is looking awfully tasty right now. I, too, am considering waffle tractor for dinner. Uh, when I look at that, that looks like an isolated waffle all on his Pat Malone. HE should be coming into the equation. It does, but he just sneaks around, and he has his first bit of bad luck there. That's the waffle just poking around the corner in time to both spot him but not get damaged. Tough gig. In a bit of a tough situation. Like what he does there, gets the HE round in, and then, as I was saying, split levels on this map. He's dived under the guns, has come up. His camo have reset by now, and he's just waiting for more work. Now, the rest of the team, though, has not been faring nearly as well. Uh, he's in a very, very good position here to take damage, uh, to put damage in from anyone crossing who is pushing up on the remaining teammates over there. But he can't really effectively roll forward with the waffle there or he will really rue the day. He could get HE for, you know, massive numbers, massive numbers. He could cop a thousand damage right now from that waffle tractor. So he's making sure that he is keeping... Look at this. Someone Did someone just have a whinge at the Leo? I mean, honest to God, he's he's knows he's in strife, takes a shot into the waffle and then he's got the DPM advantage here. He can get the waffle if he gets it. Oh! Just misses uh, the big hit there. Going around the corner. And things are looking very, very grim. Good job. But two on five. Those are not good numbers. Those are, in fact, very poor numbers. Uh, generally, around about now, the team starts whinging. Whoever's left has obviously done it wrong. Everyone else is doing it right. Whoever is left is... There we go. <laughs> boom, boom. Two kills. And it's now 1v4. This is interesting because he's going to have to really motor here. And that's one thing the Leo 1 can do 
very, very well. Um, he's looking for opportunities. He's looking to isolate, which is a, it, this is the smart play. You use speed, and quite often, if you can get towards where you last spotted the enemy, you can actually get under the guns and leave them a little bit confused and confounded. And that's exactly what he's trying to do here. And he's found, oh, 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 nice on the move shot into the E5. He'd love to, he's got to risk it. There's no two ways around. Risk it for the biscuit. Yes, happy days. 1v3, we're starting to get to more manageable numbers. Kolobanovsky territory. Someone just drove through the cap, so he knows there's two down there. There's one somewhere unaccounted for. And he doesn't know which tank drove through the cap. In fact, there could be three tanks all down there directly in front of him. He's got to take a little bit of an educated risk here, and he does so. Oh, bugger me. That's not what you wanted to see. That's one pussycat, two pussycats. There's the PTA. Misses the shot on the PTA. He's isolated the PTA, though. Now, if he can get one in and just... Oh, 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 lovely bit of footwork. Absolutely gorgeous. And he's caught the 6-3 napping. This is glorious. Still on the move. Can he tap him out? He does. Two on one. The PTA misses a shot. Wow. Gets one back. He does. And he max rolls. Woo-hoo-hoo. Bring it on down. Bring it on home to me. No one gets away. Tracking shot. Yes, move it back, move it back. PTA is going to have to muscle him and hustle him. Out touches. Oh, this is tense. This is close. Oh, this is why you drive Leos. This is why you drive tier 10 mediums. This kind of absolute insanity. And uh, it's just, just madness. This is a brilliant game. Glorious. Oh, oh, come on, buddy. <laughs> Make it happen. 7K Kolobinov. Five tank Kolobinov. You can do it. Oh, I'm rooting for him. I'm rooting for him. Looking for a hatch. Looking for a hatch. Looking for a hatch. Now it goes for the side shot. Does, though, track the Chieftain. He's got him proximity spotted here, which is a big... Be oh, that's a... Mate, that is a huge shot. Fortune favors the brave. No. Gets another one in. This chieftain is at sixes and sevens. He's panicking. He's feeling the bird. Don't show him the hatch, chieftain. Oh, you're going to be in licorice all sorts. Here it comes. Yes. 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 Bring it in for the real thing. Love it. I'm Bushka. You're the humans. Nearly 8K. That is what you call a game. Until next time. Stay safe on the battlefield. Bye for now.